All right, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, we're here to address a few developing issues as they relate to the operations of Bell MTS Place, Burton Cummings Theatre, the Manitoba Moose, and the Winnipeg Jets in light of recent developments relating to COVID-19, both internally and externally. A few of those issues are Manitoba Health's social distancing messaging and advice on avoiding large gatherings, the cancellation of our Disney on Ice shows this weekend, and the NHL's decision to pause on the season and what impact that will have on our team and operations in the interim. Please keep in mind, uh, we're dealing with these issues in real time, just like you're covering them, and we'll do our best to share what we know, but more information will be forthcoming in the days ahead. Kevin Donnelly, Senior VP of Venues and Entertainment, will speak to the first couple of points. Mark Chipman, Executive Chairman, will speak to the third. Both Kevin and Mark will open with statements before taking questions from the media. So with that, let's get started with Kevin Donnelly. Thank you, Rob. For the uh, past number of weeks and months, True North Sports and Entertainment has remained vigilant in monitoring COVID-19 and its impact on the sports and entertainment industry. And, and all the while doing our best to ensure the safety of our fans, our employees, and anyone who enters the venues do so in a safe and sanitary environment as our top priority. As part of our ongoing monitoring measures and best practices, we continue to assess tours and events coming into our venues on a day-by-day -day basis. Working closely with the promoter, we determined that it is in the best interest of our community and our employees to cancel Disney on Ice Mickey search party scheduled for March 13, 14, and 15 at Bell MTS Place. Through our assessment, this tour's previous stop before dates in Winnipeg was in Salt Lake City, March 5th through 8th at the Vivint Smart Home Arena, the same venue as the NBA's Utah Jazz, where it's reported two players have tested positive for the coronavirus. We identified the connection to Utah immediately after news broke about one player testing positive and immediately took measures with the promoter to cancel the events this weekend. Until such time as an overall ban or mandated limit on attendance is in place, we will work with each promoter on a case-by-case -case basis to determine whether to proceed with the event. And we do expect other announcements about changes in dates and potentially more cancellations as this progresses. With the NHL's announcement to pause and with the cancellation of Disney on Ice this weekend, we will continue to work very closely with our health agencies and continue in with our enhanced initiatives to keep our venue sanitized and safe for patrons, employees, and for those who work inside Bell MTS Place. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Mark? Thanks, Rob. Kevin, um, thank you for coming this afternoon, everybody, uh, uh, and what has been a somewhat unprecedented uh, day in our community and our organization. Uh, earlier this afternoon, I participated in a NHL Board of Governors uh, meeting where, as I think you all now know, uh, it was decided to pause play of all scheduled games effective immediately. Uh, I also participated in a American Hockey League Board of Governors meeting just a short while ago where the same course of action was agreed upon. Uh, while there is a strong desire uh, to resume play when and if possible, uh, we have already begun to address what these very necessary decisions mean for our teams, our arena, our employees and our fans who watch games at Bell MTS Place. Uh, and while information is still coming in, I can share with you that I've asked uh, the Winnipeg Jets to return uh, to Winnipeg from Alberta and they're en route as we speak. Uh, the Moose will return home from Milwaukee later this evening. Um, as well, ensuring that our venue remains a safe and sanitary place to work we are in regular communication with our 300 full-time and 1,200 part-time employees on what will come next and when. While the news of postponing the season is only a few hours old, we are also committed to working with and communicating to our stakeholders uh, as things continue to evolve by the hour. Um, and I would just close by saying on behalf of everyone, at, uh, at True North and the Winnipeg Jets and the Manitoba Moose. Um, I want to, I just would like to thank everybody and our fans for their patience as we continue to navigate this rapidly shifting landscape uh, together. And I, Kevin and I would be happy to take your questions. Mark Wynn. 
when did you first get the sense this could get serious? I got the sense of it, I would say, um, probably, I don't know if there's an exact day, but over a week ago, we were asked to start thinking about um, contingency uh, plans for for the Jets, and, uh, and, and uh, which necessarily involved the Moose. So there were ideas starting to be um, uh, asked to, to be considered, including the possibility of playing in an empty building, uh, the possibility of the season pausing and sliding and resuming. And, uh, and so that I would say uh, it would be approximately a week ago was when those ideas were really started to surface. How difficult was that decision at the Board of Governors? It wasn't difficult at all, no. It was, uh, yeah, both, both league meetings were very brief. Uh, there were a few questions, you know, understandably just about logistics. Uh, what this all means, and uh, and frankly, there's there's still there, there there's there's a great deal of work to do, um, to, you know, to sort those details out in, on such short uh, notice. So the the league is is committed to uh, um, you know getting more and more information to us uh, in, in a short period of time. We expect we're going to continue to to learn more and know more with each passing hour. How much of a priority is awarding the Stanley Cup this season? I don't know if, I don't know the answer to that. I think, look, I think there's only one other time where it wasn't awarded. Uh, other, I, I, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it was the Spanish flu in 1918 and, and, uh, and perhaps the year that there was no play at all. Um, so I think, I think it's important, um, but I don't think it's, you know, I, I, I think it would absolutely yield to, uh, you know, to the greater issues that we're all facing here. What are the contingency plans for best case and worst case scenario for that? I do, we, there have not been developed. They really haven't. I think, um, I, you know, they're just really raw ideas that are being bantered around right now I, because I don't think people under, I don't think anybody understands the time frame in, that we're dealing with. So it's really very difficult to speculate on, you know, whether it'll be an abbreviated season or what a playoff format would look like. Uh, I, I really think, you know, I, I've, uh, when I talked to the commissioner last week, it was day to day, and then, it, you know, a few days later, it literally became hour to hour, and it's been that way for a few days now, and uh, and I think that's the situation that we all find ourselves in. What will the players do for the next little while, coaches, players? Uh, to be determined, but right now, uh, the uh, the um, the players asked to. To head home once uh, once once they land and and wait for their instruction. Home here. Yes, home here. Yeah, to return to their homes and wait will, for. Will they be paid? Yes, they will. Yeah. Yeah, they will. Yes. So, what is the process for like the case by case basis um, with judging what concerts or other events are coming to Bell and TS Place in the next little while? I think you know. Predominantly, it, it's uh, who the audience might be. The warnings have been really specific for over the age of 65, so that becomes a, uh, one of the initial factors that we look at. Um, you know, the case with the Disney on Ice show and their, and their connection to Utah sort of brought that to the forefront, and, and the immediacy the show was starting this week. Um, so we will look at e each of those factors, and the factors, you know, quite honestly change every day. Uh, today's been quite remarkable. The Junos were canceled Live Nation, the world's largest promoter, suspended a bunch of tours, and the NHL uh, took a pause. So it's been a remarkable day for public assembly events in general. And is that the only event that's been canceled so far? Disney on Ice? Yeah. Yes, but we do expect date changes and, and more information to come out. Um, and I've been hearing from some people that there have been um, either layoffs or people are now out of work because of everything that's going on? Are you able to confirm that or numbers or anything? With our organization? Uh, yes. No, there haven't been any layoffs. Kathy, um, yeah, so just looking at this and appreciating that this is all being done hour by hour, to potentially lose uh, five Jets home games, to lose Disney to potentially lose other events and you're in the business of assembling large crowds here Do you have any idea what this could do to the bottom line for true north not yet? No, I mean we've got um, I think we've got four home, ga home games left um, It's it's uh, 
um, I hate to I hate to use the excuse, but I think it's just too early to to tell uh, whether we're in a postponement or a cancellation. Our um, scenario are two very different uh, outcomes, so um, we'll start modeling that now. And we you know we did some preliminary looking at it a week ago and what this might all look like. Suffice it to say, if uh, you know I. Um, you know, if we're if we're not able to re return to play, the the outcome would be significant. Um, can't put a number on it though. Okay. And just just on the question uh, regarding uh, layoffs, um, I guess there's two types of employees here, right? There's the full time staff at True North, then there would be the people, the the concessionaires, that sort of thing. Um, where do those people stand? So those people are on part time agreements, and they're. Uh, you know they they work when we when we work and uh, so um, regrettably to, to the extent that we're not uh, um, putting on shows and games uh, those people obviously would not have uh, a call to work and with the postponement it is different than a cancellation you know uh, hoping that we get we can move as many events into a post postponement so that work is just delayed but it would still be coming I mean if we can move an event from a date in March to a date in August then the work still occurs just on sliding events, the last question. How, I guess, Kevin, this is you. How difficult is that potentially if you have to, you know, you have concerts that are supposed to be coming through here, potentially moving the AHL season forward, moving the NHL season forward, potentially hockey playoffs beyond June? I, I mean, how difficult does that get to be for scheduling the building and do you potentially have to make hard choices? Oh, it's a her Herculean task. I mean, the, for the league scheduling, that that will be a massive undertaking for them to do in a very short period of time. Uh, each each event, each tour is done by a separate group of people, so that work gets managed. But it is it is absolutely uh, a huge task to try to coordinate every venue with every team and and the the, the mix of events that is planned, either pre-existing plans or things that are getting shifted into a new time period. That's a major undertaking. I would say just to follow up on that, the good news is that we're kind of all in this uh, together in terms of venues. You know, the, those promoters are still going to want to put those shows on. The leagues want to play these games. So um, I think there's a, uh, there's a likelihood that as difficult as it will be logistically, there, there's, there's going to be a willingness for everybody involved to, to reschedule whatever what, what otherwise was going to perform. Mark, from a hockey side, have any of your players or any of your personnel shown any uh, illness at all, or is there any risk about anyone having to be quarantined or isolated? Not, not, no, there has not. I mean, there's been some flu go through the the team, um, and uh, you know, but nothing that uh, I would, you know, that that appears to have been, or um, and and frankly, it it was quite some time ago. Um, uh, so no, we're not aware of anybody in in our group uh, that uh, is showing any symptoms right now, um, and uh, so I guess uh, you know that all remains to be seen. But uh, so far, so good. Mark, your club has been on a bit of a roll, obviously lately, and they're you know you're pushing for a playoff spot. But reality is, is that this is a, a social issue, a community issue. And when did you guys? You said at the Board of Governors meeting there was there was no dissension at all. It was just the right thing to do. Did you get a sense of that even a few days ago that everybody was going to be on board? It didn't matter where you were in the standings. Yeah, I, I you know I, d I haven't spoken to a lot of my colleagues, but the ones I did uh, pretty much shared the same views. You know, I, I mean we were in communication with Edmonton last night uh, during the game, and um, you know it was more just you know questioning or uh, wondering what was going to go down, and and uh, they were clearly of the same same mind you know that uh, um, you know and I, I as you point out I mean I'm really proud of the way our teams played this year um, I was saying to the guys before we came in here it's been a really unique year for us and I'm, uh, I can't remember one like it and I'm just I've been extremely proud of how Paul and and uh, and Kevin and Blake have, have led this organization all year long and it's um, you know it's it's really regrettable if uh, that you know we're, we're here today but uh, these are much, much larger issues, and um, I would say that you know it, you, it's not only just talking to other, to other people from other teams. Like you, the, the 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 feelings run the same right through our through our group. You know, our players feel very much the same way that, and th you know, they're the ones that are are literally, you know, um, 
you know, out there sort of giving of themselves 82 times a year, it's, it's particularly difficult, I think, for those guys to have come this far um, and to now be told that, you know, they got to pause play. But they get it. I talked to Blake this morning, and he gets it. He completely understands. And, you know, they're, they're human beings that have families and children and parents, and they're, they're all far more interested in, in, the, in, in the greater issues that we're all facing than, than playing hockey right now. As far as knowing if it's going to be a 68 or a 72 game season or you play all 82 and so much of that is, is so dependent on where this virus goes right, right. There's, there's no way to to sit down as a board of governors and say let's get going again on april 1st yeah i mean i think there's one thing there's lots of things we agreed on but one for sure is that we're none of us are are uh, you know infectious disease experts and and uh we really have to you know yield to um to the science and and uh, and and wait and see how that you know reveals itself before we can even begin to uh, speculate on how how soon we can get back and how many games we can play. Are you testing players or staff, or only if they show some symptoms? Uh, we are. You know what? I'm glad you asked that because we've one one of the resources that have been has been really really helpful to us in the last just today even, but um, and particularly today, people at. Uh, um, from the, from the Regional Health Authority and, and Manitoba Health uh, have been really responsive to those kinds of questions on testing, et cetera. Our players have not been tested yet. Um, I assumed, again, out of my ignorance, that you know that's something you just automatically do. There's a very uh, valid case that was our uh, explanation that I got uh, from, from um, sort of the leader of, uh, of, of this area in our, in our province saying that, you know, Proactive testing isn't necessarily the right thing to do, and, and I hadn't even thought of that, right? Because, and I won't go into all that or try to explain it because I'll do a terrible job of it, but really what we're told is you test when the symptoms start to present. And, uh, and so that's, that's what we'll do. We'll follow the same protocols that, that uh, Manitoba Health is, is, is asking of all the citizens of this province to follow. Okay, folks, we've got time for uh, two more questions. Okay. What do you say to fans then who've paid for tickets that likely those games won't happen? Well, if they won't, if those games don't happen, we'll refund their money. Uh, obviously, um, you know. In the meantime, we'd ask that they hang in there with us, and in the hopes that those games do get played. Did the board of governors have a kind of a drop dead date to be playing hockey? No, they did not. No. See it going well into the summer then, if it has to. I can tell you that I, I, yeah, I could see it going into July. I mean, we're we've supplied July dates to the league, um, and uh, and and all the teams have. So that's not inconceivable. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.